Castle. Uh, tiny little thing it is perched on top of a hill. The road down is pretty um, pretty steep and it's not a tarmac road. It's got loads of cobbles and everything in it. So if you do come down here, your small vans you'll have no problem I'm sure. Um, I wouldn't come up here in anything bigger than Freddy. I wouldn't bring a motor home up here and there's no turn in place so you'll have to um, either reverse down but as we came into here, the, there was a farmer here and he said just come up to, a, to his buildings and park up beside them. But you can park down the bottom and take a little walk up. So the weather's not completely on our side. The, the skies aren't particularly uh, interesting. So when you find yourself in this position with flat skies, no detail in the clouds, probably your best bet is to go black and white. But we'll have a little look, see what we can do see what we can see and uh, I'll take a picture or two it's a cute little thing isn't it yeah. lovely again this is what I love about Scotland and what I love about castles and old buildings when they just leave them uh, you know without trying to restore them let them show their age and everything but that is absolutely gorgeous that little thing i love it just got to try and find a composition now so the story behind uh knock castle is a, a sad one this tower here belonged to the gordons and uh the laird on hearing on the murder of his seven sons unfortunately fell down the staircase himself and died um that was a bit unfortunate, not a good day. Tragic. And this was a uh, traditional Scottish house from back in the day. So four stories, rather, rather impressive. So what do you think of that? Not castle. It's just a small drive. It's about a mile and a half where we stayed up the road last night. Um, so come and take a look, guys. It's really it's on the doorstep, and there's a great big campsite at the bottom down there, um, which we may try out. You'll find that when we're on adventures, that uh, we'll come to places like this, famous landmarks or just generic castles or whatever, because that's part of our uh, <laughs> part of the channel because we do photography as well. So apologies if you're here just for the, uh, the van or the camper van side of things. But uh, knitted and weaved inside this channel is photography. That's what drags us out to some of these uh, locations and landmarks. So yeah, really good.
I've just taken a, a few pictures of this uh, lovely house, Cum Castle. And what we're doing is we're putting a filter over the top of the camera lens. And a filter is basically like putting sunglasses, a thick layer of glass, darkened glass over the top of the lens. And what that does is it means you can slow your shutter speed right the way down, which means again, I can have my uh, camera lens open a lot, lot longer, which allows for the clouds in the background time to move through your picture and you'll get movement in the sky, in the clouds. That's what we're attempting to do here. So hopefully we've got a couple of uh, photographs there of Knock Castle. And now we're gonna go down to the little village of Ballater. I think that's how it's pronounced. Probably completely wrong. And have a quick wander around there. And there's toilet facilities down there as well, as well as a few shops. So um, let's go and take a look at down there. There's a big bird of prey on that tree. Where? Oh, yeah. See these what, this little cops in front of us? Yeah. The one on the right oh, yeah. at the top. Bird of prey in the trees over there. I don't know if we'll, we may be able to zoom in a bit, but it'll distort. Yeah. A quick, see if I can see what it is. Yeah, let's go have a quick look. Like we said before, guys, even if you're not into photography, do look out for the uh, photographic locations because they're sometimes the uh, best points of interest in the area. Take a picture so you can document your adventure. This little town's a great place to stop off if you want uh, a break from the van, have some, uh, have a cup of tea and coffee. There's plenty of cafes around here and a few walking shops, biking gear, etc. Yeah, really nice. Worth a stop. So that was a lovely lunch. What a treat. The little chef in there, prepare everything on the counter in front of you. Oh. Absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. yeah. The green cafe mm -hmm. to be sure to uh, definitely go in there if you're this way.
good afternoon. We've moved on from the little town and I think this is gonna be our park up for the evening. Yeah, right buried, just literally through the valley there that we drove up are all the uh, ski lifts and such. And just down the back, I don't know if you can see it off in the distance. That's an old iron work from years ago. So we'll have a little look at that. And then I've got some, um, got some editing to do. Claire's put the kettle on and there it goes. I think we should stay here tonight. You? Okay, we will. Let's stay here for the night. Where are we? Glenlivet Estate is where we are. Mm, we've got some dinner. After our lovely lunches today, we didn't really want much for dinner, so we're having a quick toasty done in the Ridge Monkeys. So we've got the one we normally have for the van, the Tony's inside, and the one I use in my little camper. There's no one inside. Brilliant. Nice and easy, just keep flipping them over. Whoa, look at that. Cheese toasty. The other king camping food. Hmm. Well, this isn't what we want to be doing, but it's one of the reasons we carry dog poo bags with us when we don't have a dog. So we've come to this lovely park up and there's waste left by whoever was here at some point before us, used tissues and whatnot. So we've just picked them up. A, we don't want them ruining the place and B, we don't want anybody thinking it was us. There's a little bird out there. Oh, hello. It's a bit gross. No, there's only tissue. Is it? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what dog poo bags are for. Good morning. And a welcome morning to the sound we think of a uh, goldfinch. Gold crest. Gold crest. Not goldfinch, yeah, gold crest. Really vocal bird. Isn't isn't that just stunning life? Here he is. Oh no, it's not. Yeah, he's back on the same tree as he was yesterday. I think. Lovely. So we're still at the Glenlivet estate and we'll uh, take a little walk down and see the old uh, building down the end there and a bit of history of that in a minute. I had a nice sleep last night. I'll tell you what is uh, strange. Of old, you used to um, be asleep, and if someone pulled up in the night, you'd know. But I tell you, with all these uh, electric cars, they, they sneak up on you. You don't hear them so much. <laughs> so we woke up today, and we had a we had a neighbour went to bed last night, and we didn't. <laughs> There's my lovely there. Hello. Good morning. And what have you had for breakfast today? When in Rome and all that, I have had porridge, Scots oats porridge. There you go, I had uh, fruit and carnation. Park it a minute. On top of the tree, a little bit of the bush, sorry, just there.
that's quite an interesting uh, building. In the 1730s, this was used uh, to mine down and find some iron ore, and uh, the business like, business only lasted seven years before it uh, folded, and then the building uh, just stayed here derelict. But then later on in the 1800s, um, the mine reopened, and they went digging for manganese, which is a substance used in uh, bleach. Yeah, there you go. And all around this area, before the uh, creation of these major roads, you had little enterprises set up for uh, making and distilling whiskey, which was quite interesting. And they used to do it in these real barren, hilly areas, and they'd come marching over the, the mountains to make their uh, <laughs> to make their uh, whiskey. A bit like the scene out of Dukes of Hazard, a bit of uh, moonshining, and. Um, yeah, they'd make the whiskey and smuggle it back over the top of the mountains into the uh, nearby villages for uh, distribution. And obviously you're not going to get the uh, flavour of how harsh and um, barren this is at the moment. But in the winter the, the ski slopes are just over there. So we're right on on level with the uh, the big ski slopes. So this would be absolutely buried in snow. So harsh conditions, hardy Scotsmen, that's what they were, absolutely. That was enjoyable. It's a half a mile walk from the uh, car park there. And obviously our what three words, our location. Very quiet during the night. I say we woke up to a neighbor this morning and we didn't even here turn up so uh, ideal um, is used during the daytime it is a site on this uh, scenic trail so people will come down to have a look at that building be behind us but um, I think we saw three or four people all day so really really nice uh, we did run out of diesel yesterday for the diesel heat up so I think we need to take a take a little look at um, where the closest garage is and go and make sure we've got plenty of diesel for the uh, heater. Claire wasn't very happy last night, that's for sure. <laughs> she was all right, she's quite hardy herself. Must be her half Scottish blood. But there you go. Unlike me, Southern Fairy. Well, I'm not actually. I've got hardy ancestry, that's for sure. On my father's side, which is Swedish, right up in the uh, plains of Sweden my uh, grandfather came from to serve in the First World War. Good on him, good old egg. So yeah, a bit of Viking in both of us no doubt. And the rest of me is just bits of this and bits of that to be fair. <laughs> I need to research that because my, uh, my mum's Maiden name it was Kyle. So uh, I don't know how far back we need to look to find any Scottish uh, ancestry there either. So who, who knows? Who knows where we all come from? Who cares? As long as we can all have a healthy and uh, good life. But the 